Okay, I just wanted to make a follow-up video here. I've actually talked to Texas Instruments and I have a uh, much simpler solution. And uh, also I want to address some comments. So uh, first off, there was a post on the Yellowcraft mailing list that I see copy and pasted around a lot by someone who uh, clearly didn't actually watch the video. He uh, was trying to state that uh, the advice of setting the level slider to 100 to uh, avoid attenuation was incorrect and in that uh, setting it to 100 actually adds gain. And uh, he would be correct if we're talking about something that was enumerated as a microphone, which is actually the bug. That's why after clearing the bug, your level goes down with the slider still at 100%. So here we go. This is, this is a line-in device. This is what it would look like after you clear the bug. If you right-click at 100% and set it to decibels, you can see we're at 0 dB. It's, uh, it's not adding plus 30 like he uh, claimed it was. That's only if it's been enumerated as a microphone input and you have not cleared the bug. And uh, I did hear back from Texas Instruments, so I'll put that up on the screen here, but essentially I got the exact response I was expecting. Uh, they admit it is a bug in uh, operation. Uh, they've known about it for a very long time, and uh, they pointed me towards the white paper they have outlining the bug's behavior, which I also had already linked in the original Reddit topic. Uh, and they also state that uh, as for a driver fix, uh, it was fixed in hardware with the C revision and later, which have been available since 2011. So uh, it doesn't help us out too much, but they, they knew of the bug. They admit it is a bug for the people saying that this is all made up and, uh, you know, it's not real. Here is Texas Instruments themselves admitting the uh, issue with their product and that it was fixed in the C revision and later. But after some testing, there's a much easier solution. Uh, I did try it in the first video about 11 minutes in but uh, got some unexpected behavior and saw still had some distortion, but it turns out that was actually caused by some software I was using, some ASIO software that was using another sound card I have, uh, caused some kind of faulty behavior where the distortion stayed present, but doing some more testing on more operating systems, the fix at 11 minutes in that video actually works quite well. Uh, it's much easier. Once you do it, it stays there forever and you never have to touch it again, and the bug is essentially fixed. So I'm gonna run you through that right now really quick. So back in control panel, just click sound again. Open this up. Go to the recording tab again. Now on your radio here, right click properties. Now on the levels tab, this is what I did in the video. I lowered this and the distortion stayed, but that turned out to be a bug in separate software. So this fix should actually work just fine. We've tried this on a few systems and uh, they checked it with a scope and it looks like it was fine. I encourage you to check as well, but we're about 99% sure this should be just fine. So on the levels tab, right click if it's not already and hit decibels. And because it's been enumerated as a microphone device and we have not applied the fix in the first video, it's reading plus 30 dB. If we were going to here and to toggle the channel count like we did before, this plus 30 at 100% would now be zero. And that is one way to fix it, but it's annoying and it doesn't stick. So now that we right click and we have DB, we can drop this down and get rid of the gain until it reads as close to zero as possible. The closest you'll most likely be able to get is about minus 04, which is, that's just fine. Uh, that way it's, it's not adding that 30 DB of gain anymore and you do not have to mess around with changing channel count. Don't touch this, leave it at the channel count you want with the sample rate you want. Then go into the levels tab and remove the gain this way. Uh, setting it as close to zero as possible. Hit apply, hit okay, and then you're good to go uh, for the rest of the time you will ever be using this device. Even if you turn it off, turn it back on. This will get remembered. It'll get enumerated incorrectly as a microphone device, but uh, that's okay because we can remove that gain here and the, uh, the problem is fixed. I did try this in the first video during some testing and I wanted to recommend it as it is a much easier fix but every time I did this, I would still have distortion on the waveform, and I didn't want to recommend that and uh, make people's setups worse. But uh, that turned out to be a bug in some uh, ASIO software I was using that had initialized another sound card. Uh, so long story short, uh, that was an issue on my system. We've tested this on Windows 7, 8, and 10 on a few other systems, and this actually does get rid of the gain. Just hit apply, hit OK. Now I can uh, turn my radio off, it'll disconnect. I'll turn it back on. You can see uh, as before with the uh, previous fix, it would jump back up to clipping. 
as it would be enumerated as a microphone device again and not a line-in device after we had uh, fixed it there. And that slider would then again be adding plus 30 dB of gain. You can see that's not happening here. We can uh, go back into levels. It is still seen as a microphone device, which is technically incorrect as it is a line-in device, but we've reduced the gain to as close as we can get to zero, and it'll stay like that. You should not have any distortion on your waveform. You can just leave it at the channel count you want. Do not apply the previous fix. Leave this alone. Just uh, get rid of the gain here, and it should stick. Now, I did get a lot of questions on the uh, setting of levels, especially with signalings. People were having kind of weird setups. They couldn't get the uh, meter very high, or they couldn't uh, get it very low. So after removing that uh, 30 dB of gain there, which I highly recommend doing, open up this meter again. It's uh, going to be linked in the description again. Make sure it's reading from your radio or your signal link here. And then generally, if your radio has a output level setting, such as a USB output level setting, or a audio frequency output setting, or an accessory or data output level setting, I generally recommend turning that uh, up. It's usually attenuation, uh, not in all radios, but turning that down usually just attenuates it, which means you have to crank your signal link back up. So most of the time I recommend on the radio setting that uh, pretty high, maybe a couple notches down from high. And then after getting rid of that 30 dB of gain, adjust your signal link RX knob until you're about here. Uh, like I said before, you just want some headroom, but you don't want it at minus 50 or minus 60, as I've seen some people send screenshots in. Uh, you just want it to be around here with the AGC off, which you definitely want for digital modes anyway. Uh, make sure it's not riding way up here by zero, maybe peaking at minus eight, minus six max. You just want some headroom, but not all the way down here and you should be good to go. And that's about all you need to do. Now I have seen some people claim that it, uh, they're working fine. They don't want to touch it. They want to leave that 30 dB of digital gain on and then crank their signaling down. And yes, that'll work fine. I mean, technically these digital modes we're running were designed from the ground up to work in horrible situations. But if you have control over it, it's best to make it as best you can. And then you'll, uh, you'll get better signal to noise performance uh, on your actual decodes and get a little more decodes, hopefully. So uh, do not crank your signal link all the way down, which pushes your analog audio down into the noise floor of the signal link, which we have seen on a spectrum analyzer down around 60 minus 70 dB. The signal link does have some self-generated noise. So when you leave this at plus 30 dB and then crank your signal link RX knob down, you're pushing your signals down into that noise floor. So to avoid that, clear the plus 30 dB of gain, then adjust your signal link appropriately so you're reading about this. Hope that helps. Okay, I did see some people found a free uh, oscilloscope program that will read from your sound card. The one I was using was inside a, an audio workstation program. It wasn't free, uh, so people weren't really able to use that easily. So people have been posting this program around. It's called Sound Card Oscilloscope. I'll post it in the comments. Uh, I checked it out. It is. It does work well. It does not have any viruses. You're safe to download and use it. But uh, when you open it up here, make sure you go to Settings. And then here in Input, make sure you select your radio because usually it will not be uh, set on your radio by default. So set it to your radio here. Go back to the oscilloscope tab. I recommend amplitude be set at about uh, 250. Uh, that's in millivolts, but uh, the unit doesn't matter too much as it doesn't actually know the millivolt level into your sound card. You'd have to calibrate it yourself, but that doesn't matter. Just set it to 250. That will allow it to actually see flat tops in your audio and they won't be uh, up off top of the screen. And then time, set it to about four milliseconds so you can uh, see a couple cycles here. Then just let it run and, and this is what it should look like. You shouldn't have any flat tops uh, as shown in the previous video. Reducing that slider, it should look uh, pretty good like this. Now, uh, if it looks like this, I'll raise that slider up here. That's flat topping. That's with the slider left at plus 30. Uh, it'll look like that if you leave that slider at plus 30 and adjust your signal link to where it should be. Usually it'll do this. You do not want that. I want to make sure that slider is at uh, about as close to zero as you can get it, and it'll look like this. So uh, just a hint, this program does seem to work pretty well. Uh, it is free, totally free. It doesn't uh, nag you to pay or anything, and it doesn't have any viruses. So I do recommend this. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, just ask again. Uh, but previously in the, in the previous video, it looks like the distortion I was seeing was not caused by this bug itself. It was caused by something else going on. 
So I wanted to follow up with an easier fix and uh, share the response from Texas Instruments, who uh, do say themselves, yes, the bug does exist. We've known about it for a long time. We had a white paper out to all manufacturers using this chip uh, showing the behavior and uh, it's nothing new and we did fix it in the C revisions of the chip. So I hope that helps.